Hi guys, uh, my name is Adil Latif. I've been working at the National Renewable Energy Lab for the last five years. I'm a senior uh, engineer there. Uh, uh, we've just started working on a project called uh, 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 Co-Design of Transmission and Distribution for, for Improved Power System Planning and Operation. Uh, we've got a project partner, uh, uh, NYSERDA, that is working with us. NYSERDA is uh, New York's uh, Energy uh, uh, Research and Development Authority. So, they, so they've been working with us uh, in, in the development of this, this project. Uh, before I actually go into this slide, which is very heavy, I wanted to give you an understanding the motivation why we actually started working with OpenMDO. Uh, a year and a half ago, they came up with a question. Uh, the question was about retirement of pico plants. Uh, and when we thought about, when we went back to Enrol and they really thought about this problem, we realized that we won't be, we won't be, we won't be able to solve or actually answer the question the way they've presented it, just because the way the power system is studied, right? If you look at the power system, it is very analogous to what you see in the aeros aerospace industry, kind of. So you've got subdomains, and each of those subdomains have different tools that actually look into those subdomains, right? So you might have like capacity expansion that looks at like decades ahead. You might, uh, it's looking at what uh, the capacity of the system should be, how it should be operated under like future scenarios, right? Uh, if you have elect electrified grid, uh, if you've got electrified vehicles, all of that, how would you operate that? Uh, what, can, what, what do you need to plan for? You've got uh, day head dispatch, so you, you're looking at what generation assets you have and how do you use them uh, uh, in an ideal manner, right, in the day ahead type, type of uh, forecasting or weekly, week ahead type of uh, pieces. And, when we, and then there are many other pieces that you would look into, right? So we wanted to come up with a solution that was, uh, and, and when we're talking about power system domain, they, all of these are actually done in silo. So when you're looking at capacity expansion, you're typically not looking at production costs, you're not looking at uh, stability type of scenarios, so you're not looking at, say, uh, load flow, you're not looking at uh, transient stability, right? Which, which is important. Uh, so we were, when, when we thought about the question, the, the, the peak of plant question, we realized that to be able to answer that holistically, what we will have to do is actually come up with an architecture that allows, allows these subdomains to actually talk together. Uh, and in our research, uh, we actually landed on an open MDO, which I thought was one of, the, one of the most decent ways of approaching the problem, right? Uh, when we talk about, uh, I, sorry, my glasses keep fogging up, I can't see there. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, so when we when we talk about uh, the background to this project, right? As I've said, if you look at this diagram there, uh, there are two two different things that we need to be worrying about, right? There is there is this uh, the, the way operations are uh, the way planning is currently done, right? We've got the transmission side, which where you actually produce the bulk of power and transport power. You've got the distribution side where you're actually consuming power, right? And, and, and what was the case a couple of decades ago where, where the, when there weren't a lot of renewable energy resources was that transmission was studied in silo and, and distribution was studied in the silo, right? So even within the power system, there are these uh, gaps where, where, where when, when you're building out policy, you're either looking at the transmission side or the distribution side and not taking a holistic picture. And that is what we're trying to solve right now. Uh, all right. Uh, one of, one of the, the simplest pieces that we started off with was this very simple uh, simulation where you've got the transmission side where, where you're transporting the bulk of energy where it is being produced. You've got some market operations that decide what generator is going to start, when it is going to stop, when, when certain assets are going to be operating or not. Right, and then you've got the distribution side that defines uh, how the end consumption is going to happen, right? We've got different simulators that do all of this. Uh, we've got an in-house tool called Helix that allows, this is a co-simulation engine that was developed by six or seven different national labs, and was part of that. Uh, and this is uh, the one of the differences between Helix and other co-simulation engines if you're working with, is that this is a hierarchical 
uh, kind of approach, which is uh, different to many simulator engines that you might have looked at. But the idea here is this allows you to uh, synchronize different simulators and run them through time, right? Uh, and and get, get, get more or less the same results as, as you would with a monolithic uh, architecture. This allows us to use the same simulation tools that have been tried, tried and tested that are uh, 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 that are, I mean, uh, really used by the industry, right? They, they, they're validated by the industry and they're, they're uh, uh, yeah. Uh, but then the second question arises, how do we actually start to integrate other pieces on top of this? Uh, other pieces meaning, uh, what if we've got an investment strategy, we've got a code that allows us to build out an investment strategy, how does that trickle down to, say, say capacity expansion model? How does, and, and from that, how does it trickle down to production cost? We've done these kind of studies in an ad hoc manner, uh, I should say. So we've done like really large studies like LA100, uh, where we've taken values from capacity expansion, uh, plug them in manually into production cost, and do it that way, but that, of course, does not seem to be the right way to do it, right? Uh, and, and, and what we started to realize was that when we do this, we, we do have feed-forward kind of uh, uh, information going flowing uh, in, in one direction. We typically don't have feed, feed, uh, feedback, right? Uh, so essentially, we're not actually looking at what happens when things break and, and try and iterate and, and make them converge. So that is one thing that we wanted to look into. Uh, the PA for this project, Brian Palmentier, uh, my mentor also, uh, he comes from the aerospace industry and he talked about the open MDO approach, uh, MDO in general, and that it has been prevalent in the aerospace industry for a while uh, and, and asked me to look into it. Uh, and when I did, uh, I, I really liked it. I actually knew about open MDO since 2000 uh, at the R&D 100 awards, I believe. Uh, but I haven't actually used it since, uh, until, until about like three, four months ago. All right. So my first experience with OpenMDA was, was as follows, right? I want a complete problem, right? I've got multiple simulators, uh, each of them uh, that it works in a very specific subdomain, right? I've got three different uh, pieces that are important, right? Uh, when, when I'm building out an interface to OpenMDA, each simulator has to have its own interface. The second piece is uh, the simulator I.O. setup. So the, uh, one of the points was raised already. Each simulator might have the same variable, but that is like actually slightly different the way it uses it. Uh, we ran into the same issue as well. And then finally, the, the interface to open, open MDO itself, right? And when we're building out a tool, something like this, I don't want each domain expert to be writing their own code because I know that they're going to be very, very different and there's going to be no consistency. Uh, the, the second piece is when, when, when I've got so many tools connected to one another, I want to make sure that there is some outer layer that defines each variable. Uh, and, and thirdly, uh, I wanted to make sure uh, that, that the approach we come up with is, is user-friendly, but also it is scalable, right? Uh, and the way we went about doing this at Enrel was as follows. Uh, we've defined uh, a Python library that actually wraps around OpenMDO. Uh, the way it does it is, is, is by using microservice architecture. Uh, we, we take out the, we break OpenMDO problem into the server side piece and the client side piece. Uh, the client side piece essentially uh, what we do in the client side piece initially, sorry, uh, I, I need to, I keep getting fo uh, foggy. Uh, the client side piece essentially uh, uh, wraps around uh, the, the IO simulator. Uh, we've got uh, an additional layer uh, that declares all the variables. So essentially we uh, standardize all the input variables that come into, uh, into the OpenMVO uh, framework. Uh, we've looked into two different standards, the SIM format, which is the common information model. And we've also looked into uh, 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 other standards as well. Uh, what we've realized that most of these standards are really bloated for the purpose that we need them for. Uh, so we, we might actually uh, not use them uh, explicitly in the way they were meant to. We, may, we might just take, take parts of them and, and use those 
uh, as per our need. The second piece of information is, is how do I, I actually scale them and add features that would, would really benefit users? Uh, the way we did that was, was using, as I said, uh, a microservice arch architecture approach. Uh, uh, we've got uh, OpenMDMS uh, client side, uh, and what that allows you to do is, is actually make post requests to the, to the server side. Uh, we've got the server side, which has a lot more responsibilities. This is the side that is actually going to build the OpenMDO models for you. It is going to run the optimization, it is, and, but, but it is also going to provide, uh, uh, it is also going to provide uh, a, a lot of methods for the UI that we're developing as well. Uh, I think one thing that was pointed out initially was, was, was thinking about something like Simulink where you're able to draw things and connect things and run the simulation that way. Uh, we, we're actually headed that way already. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that also. Uh, but the idea that we have is this. Run, uh, run the, the optimization on the server side. Uh, run the solvers on the client side. Uh, uh, what we do is, is, uh, is the server side manages the, 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 the component UUID, and, what, uh, and, what, and every single time you do make a call, that UUID is recorded, and then we, we're able to set up a problem that way. Once we have the problem, Right, and this is uh, one thing that is required in OpenMD, of course, if, if you're using like something like an explicit component, is that you would need a callback to, to the compute method, right? Uh, we've got three different uh, implementations there. Uh, we can use, uh, uh, we can use the, the microservice architecture, right? So we can just make a post request, uh, but this turned out to be slow for, for, where, for when for cases where you had many, many callbacks, right? So you had thousands of iterations. Uh, so one option we went with was, was to have an option of using ZMQ, which seems to be uh, working really fast and seems to work fine. All right, uh, my bad. I don't think I, I'll be able to show this. Uh, but one thing, I, uh, one thing I wanted to just highlight here, and I was, I don't know if I would have time to do it an actual demo or not, uh, what, one thing I really wanted to point out is the way you build out an open, open MDO problem, this is a problem that I copied from the website itself, is that you would import uh, openmdo.api's OM and then you would build out your model and run it, right? And the, if you do it, you would see, if I run this example, it would solve on the client side, right? Uh, but if I do the exact same code, and instead of importing from the open MDO library, you import from uh, OpenMDO, the, the, the one that we've implemented, uh, what you'll see happen is instead of actually solving it on the client side, we're able to bro break it down. Those are the same pieces of code, if you look down here, they're actually making post requests, all of these, right? And, and if you look at on this side is now, so the, 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 the optimization is actually solving on the server side where, whereas the results are getting posted back to the client side. Uh, so this is the approach we're taking at this point. Uh, uh, so the idea here was that people who are familiar with the OpenMDO uh, can, can actually use the exact same code, uh, just plug in the second library and they'll be able to just uh, run it in, a, in, the, in the microservice architecture framework. Uh, and, and the develop prototype makes use of the documentation as well. So if you, if you and, and the way we're doing it is we're using a meta class that wraps around every single class in OpenMDO, uh, which means that we're, we're out automatically generating code uh, to make those post requests, so you don't have to manually update these things. Uh, and if, if I go to Python and I just call help on one of these methods, it's actually going to show you the help for OpenMDO uh, method directly. And the reason we do that is because we don't, uh, we, we're actually using the exact same syntax, right? So there is no duplication there. Uh, all right. Uh, the OpenMD, uh, uh, the, the lib this is the Python library. It is currently closed source, uh, but I am getting to a point where it is, it is getting a lot more stable uh, for, for, for most of the use cases that, that at least we've worked with. And we're hoping to make it open source soon. Uh, 
Uh, and we've got multiple layers of interfaces. Uh, in the way, I would want you to think about this is as follows. Uh, so the most advanced layer is, so we've got a client-side interface and we've got a server-side interface. So for most uh, advanced users that don't want to use our client-side interface, for example, they can build their own methods, their own post request. They can still use uh, the, the, at least the server-side implementation, right? Uh, and, and that would allow them uh, to, to modify or build whatever they want. Uh, but this would require uh, uh, knowledge of uh, microservice arch architectures, of course, but it will also require uh, knowledge of Python and then the simulator itself. Then we've got an intermediate level kind of interface where you're using both the client side and the server side. Uh, you would require uh, knowledge of OpenMDO a little bit. Uh, but you won't require uh, that much knowledge on, on, on microservice architecture. And then uh, one thing, final thing that was pointed out early on was using uh, config files. So uh, one final thing that I did was have a much higher level interface. Uh, so we've got uh, our system simulators, uh, and we, I've built higher level interfaces for them. And what that essentially means is that you're able to interface with the framework without having any knowledge of OpenMDO. If you say this is the model, I want it to be part of this problem, you can do that. And you can just, all, and all you'll need to do that, to do is create a TOML file, uh, essentially a config file uh, that can actually be run by the framework itself. And that config file is actually going to set up the entire ecosystem for us. So the server side, the client side, everything gets executed automatically. All right. <clears throat> Uh, we already have, we, all, we also have a UI currently in development. The UI is uh, serviced by the backend, which is the server side. Uh, we, we're using uh, Vue.js for the implementation. Uh, and, and, and the UI actually allows you to do things in a draw, drag and drop manner. So we've got uh, interfaces built out for the simulators that we typically use uh, for, for all the different subdomains. Uh, what we're essentially trying to do is have those as draggable objects that you can just put in. You define what inputs and outputs you want, and you start to create links, and then you run, run the optimization. Uh, that is, uh, we're very close uh, to that piece as well. Uh, I wish I had, I had actually time to, to do a demo, but this is currently what the interface, sorry. So this is what the current, uh, this is currently what the interface kind of looks like. Uh, you're able to add, add subcomponents, you're able to edit uh, problems, you're able to save them. Uh, we've got, a, uh, uh, we've got a, a, a database set up as well, so a user can, can create uh, new test cases, save them. Uh, we have uh, user management, we have credential management, uh, we have session management, all of that implemented already. All right. Uh, all right, future work. So there are some pieces that I would like to, to finish, finish up on. Uh, uh, some, one thing, of course, is support for all modules within the OpenMDO library. Currently, I'm supporting like four different drivers, uh, and most, most components in, that are available within the Open, OpenMDO framework, uh, but I would want to extend it to every single thing that is in the OpenMDO library. Uh, uh, add support for uploading and, and using surrogate models on server side is something that, that is of interest to me because uh, one of the things that we struggle with uh, within the power system industry is, is NDAs, right? Uh, we have to work with utilities that typically don't like to share models. Uh, and and one, one, of the, one of my thoughts about what if they're able to just share surrogate models with us uh, because that doesn't delve too much in internal information, right? Uh, that is something I, I'm exploring as, as well. And then, um, uh, and then, yeah, building the interface to the to all the power system subdomains that are in, of interest to us. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adil. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, I think we had. So I know that we had at least one question from online. So I'm wondering if. Uh, Actually, that was, that was just a project collaborator letting us know that they're ah. available to answer questions. Oh, excellent, excellent. So in that case, um, if there are uh, questions from the audience. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, so first of all, I think this is really cool. Uh, a lot of stuff that we're looking into as well. Um, my question is, if you are running this code on your own computer, so then what, from what I understand, your compute method is going to be run on a server. Um, if there was proprietary information in that compute method, it would still be on your computer though, right? Like when you talk about getting around the NDAs, the person who's running it on their, who has the, a copy of the code, it would still be there? You're talking about the surrogate, right? Yeah. So, so my idea with the surrogate is that you build it locally, you upload it. That, that, so that way you, you circumvent that piece. So you would, you would, so the inter, so the surrogate model that essentially runs on the server side, yes, but you're not actually the internals of the model are not exposed, right? At least. Okay. I have a follow-up question: the way you implemented your microservices, are you just communicating basically inputs and outputs? So effectively, the compute method is shipping off to the server and then coming back with new output values. Yeah. So 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 the way we do it is the server method actually the server method wraps around. Uh, so in the, within the server, we've got a, a method that wraps around compute, right? And that within that compute, we're actually calling ZMQ or whatever implementation that, that does the callback. Right. So when we call compute on the server side, it actually does the callback on the client side automatically. So I, I think the answer to your question is that the I.O. of the component will be available locally, but you won't have any visibility into how that inputs were mapped to those outputs. Yes. So there's, yeah, it depends on whether your supplier is willing to let you see those outputs or not, but that's a different issue. So I know you said, <clears throat> excuse me, I know you said that your IO is still in development, but I'm wondering about the three different levels, the advanced, intermediate, and beginner. What are your expectations for your users? Do you think that people are actually going to be willing to go to the effort of learning your tool so they can use the advanced method and vice versa, do you think that your beginner level is going to be detailed enough for them to actually use? Uh, yes. Uh, so le let me begin with the first one. Uh, I think the, the beginner level is, is going to be easy enough to use uh, just because what we're doing here is ex exposing all the different inputs, all the different outputs, and all the different interface all the things that uh, that a simulator interface can potentially provide to us. So we're putting, the, putting that all in the UI itself. I haven't actually gone through that, but it allows you to do all of that. Uh, and, and, and for a beginner, all you would need to do is just go through some inputs uh, on the dashboard and, and, and set that up. And then once that uh, icon appears, you can start to connect things, right? Uh, and that is quite straightforward. And, and, that, and that would allow you to build many, many different use cases that are standard across the power system industry. There might be use cases where you won't be able to use the UI, and for that we have that lower level interface where you're able, because the server side implementation is, is, is generic, right? You can build whatever components you want, and, and, and if you have your own uh, client side interface or if you ha have your own client side implementation, you can, you can essentially extend it to whatever you want, uh, possibly. So awesome, then, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for Adil? Um, in that case, do you want to give us a quick demo? If, uh, could you do that in, in five minutes? Or is that not enough time? Uh, I potentially can, yeah. Let okay, me see. very good. start with problem one, which is the easiest one, right? In this case, we've got just a few lines of code, right? Uh, if I do something like this, I'm importing from here, uh, and if I save it, make sure I do that. If I run it now, right, sorry. Come on. You see that it, it runs on the on the client side, right? If I you now what what we're doing now is instead of doing this, if I if I import it from here and do this, let 
if I start the server on the here as well, what you'll see happen is every single line of code that is executed on that side is actually creating a post request, right, which is being served by the server itself. So we're actually building components on the server side and, and actually building, building the models on the server side and running and executing it there, where, and the results get passed back. We can do it, this, the same thing, so this is a very simple piece of code, right? We can do it with classes as well, uh, where, where this was one of the most minimal examples we could think of, right? Uh, this comes from the documentation directly as well. Uh, here again, uh, if you look at this code, I can execute it both ways, right? And it's going to work uh, one way, so it's going to run locally uh, if I use the, 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 the default open, open MDO library, but if I use mine, it's going to actually run on the server side while, while the actual execution, uh, if I had uh, a solver, it's going to be solving on the client side itself. So the compute has that callback capability. Right, uh, and then finally, uh, this, is what, this is what the piece I was talking about. Uh, what I'm able to get to is this piece here. And what that allows me to do is if I have a config file, all I need to do is say, uh, I just need to create a problem from that config file and just run that, and that is essentially it. I, I remove all, uh, all layers, so I, I remove the user from uh, OpenMD itself, so, so folks who are not familiar, or, or don't want to be familiar, I should say, uh, can use that, this very high level interface and I can use that directly with my UI as well. So I can provide different levels from the UI directly as well, where, where advanced users can do many more things compared to what, what beginners can do. Right. So at the, at the end of your run script, are you, are you left with, sorry, it's, I'm yeah. asking. Are you left with um, like a sort of a pseudo problem instance that has your data from the optimization, you can like see the values of the variables and stuff? Yes, you can. Okay. So the, the data is copied locally? It, the, the, yeah, the data can be called back again. Okay. Exactly. Awesome. Uh, th thank you very much. I like that uh, the streamlined implementation of just switching the library call to, uh, to have it uh, implemented on the server side rather than your own, yeah. than your own system. Uh, and if, if anybody has time, I, I can give him a demo, quick demo of the, of the have, UI as well. We have one more question here. One more question. You basically just got to it. I, I wanted to ask about uh, demoing the UI. Um, okay. We're, we're, if you have time, if not. Um, I, I, of course I do. If not, I understand. Either way. Um, That's just, why I'm here. Just as you are also getting ready to open source. Uh, that, that is the hope, yes. I, I would also be very interested in uh, being potentially a user of your UI. Awesome. So just All right. it, Thank just you. Just letting you know that you have my vote of confidence there. Sorry. Uh, so as I said, the UI actually runs on, uh, uh, is, is, is being built on Vue.js. The way essentially it would work, so I've got, uh, there are certain kinks, it's, it's, it's a work under progress. So we've got, uh, uh, we've got user authentication already built in. Uh, we've got, we, we, so we, you're able to create uh, users, you're able to delete users. There are uh, different roles you can assign, uh, admin or a simple user. Each user can have can save create or save models. The way the build looks current, the, the way the current the build looks like is something like this, uh, where you can actually click on this. Uh, we've got interfaces for a couple of simulators right now, uh, so I can say uh, I want the OpenDSS simulator uh, interface with the OpenDSS simulator. I can fill out all these values, so it would pop up all the the drop downs for me. So what in, inputs and outputs are available for it? All of those pieces. Uh, I can fill that up, I can fill what other model options I have. Uh, so one thing we realized was each simulator was slightly different, uh, and that might require some, uh, something like this, where you have like uh, a, an, op uh, an option key, an option value kind of thing. So say you want to load in a specific file or something like that, you can add values there and you can click on add model. Uh, currently I don't have a lot of checks, but this would add this model here. Uh, and, and once you have this input and outputs defined, it is going to show that as, show that as, as dots here that you can start to uh, connect, like connect things one another. Uh, you can define, 
the constraints as well. You can define the objective as well, and then you can finally define what driver you want to use, and you can add properties. Uh, you can you can define uh, options for those drivers as well. Uh, currently, as I said, I'm not supporting everything, but uh, it's, it's up to four now. But it's, it hasn't updated here, so we we're up we're supporting currently we're currently supporting four drivers right now. Uh, and then you can you can save the model. It's going to appear. Uh, did I do something wrong? I might have broken something there. Uh, you, can, you can actually save the model and then you can run the simulation directly from here as well. Once you do that, you can go back and this page is not completely developed. Uh, you can go to home, oh, is the server not running? That's the case. I think uh, for, for a more, more detailed uh, example, uh, this is as far as we can go for right now, but Otto, thank you, thank you so much for demonstrating all this for us. If you thank have you. any uh, additional questions or you want to see an additional demo, please, you know who to track down. Thank you. Thank you very much.